Hello and welcome to the Perpetual Now. I'm your host, E Sin, and let's talk a little bit about Tapping the Vein. No, I don't mean the Sodom album, I mean the band Tapping the Vein. Tapping the Vein is a Pennsylvanian self described dark rock slash alternative rock band who, at one point during their career, was actually signed to Nuclear Blast. Yes, that nuclear blast. During an interview, singer Heather Thompson actually said that this was due to nuclear blast simply liking what they had to offer and that it helped their distribution immensely. And for the glorious span of one single full length album, Tapping the Vein was actually on the nuclear blast roster. And that is the album that I am going to be talking about today Tapping the Vein's first full length. The Damage. Now, I just said that the band described themselves as being a dark rock band, but that in and of itself isn't really descriptive, like what the hell does that even mean? So I'm gonna try and elaborate on that a little bit. First of all, although the sound isn't exactly dated, it does seem to come from a time between the mid-1990s and early 2000s, in that it wouldn't be impossible to find a song of this style on a TV show such as Buffy the Vampire Slayer, for instance. Now, this was a time when rock music with electronic influences did not mean that you had to end up as the Imagine Dragons clone number fucking I don't know what. This was a time when drum patterns were a lot more loose, a lot less restricted, the guitars always had a grungy feeling to them, the riffs were rather simple, and the lyrics were always trying to be more profound than the next band. As far as sound goes, tapping the vein sound can be described as grungy rock with with real subtle electronic influences that borders in terms of hardness and inclinations on gothic metal. Now, what I mean by that is this. The music of Tapping the Vein employs the looser, sort of more spread out drum patterns that were more popular with the 90s bands. The riffs that you find in these songs that are laid on top of these drums are rather simple, and electronic influences as well as goth influences sort of blend in with this mixture in that it's either subtle synthesizer touches, background elements, or electronic drums. In terms of how the guitars are used, you hear a really subtle grunge influence in that Tapping the Vein doesn't really engage in writing complex or even catchy riffs. The riffs are used in this album much like an afterthought, in that they are not front and center and they are not the main selling point. What I mean by that is this. The blend that is created with the lucid drums, the grungy riffs, the vocals, which I'm going to talk about in a minute, the electronic touches, it all creates one whole thing in that it is kind of hard to actually break it down to separate parts because in the end what is created is greater than the sum of the parts that are used in creating it. And if still that sounds too abstract, let me just describe what the crux of this band is, which is the vocals and lyrics of singer Heather Thompson, now known as Heather Thompson Macintosh. Paradise Lost fans may actually recognize the name Heather Thompson from the liner notes of some of Paradise Lost's later albums in which she helped in the vocals department in several songs. She is the heart and soul of this album. If you are listening to this album, no matter which song you are on, no matter what turns the song takes, whether it's soft-spoken bridge sections or harder choruses, you may be sure of one thing, it is that Heather Thompson is going to sing her fucking soul out. Whether she's softly crooning or screaming her lungs out in anguish, it is clear that Heather Thompson's vocal performances are what takes this band and elevates their output beyond their peers. In fact, Heather Thompson's vocals are so central to the album that, no offense to the band, much respect for what they have done, but the entire music seems to exist simply so she can lay vocals on top of it. Which brings me to the second most important component of Tapping the Veins music, which would be the lyrics and their delivery. Now, right off the bat, the band is called Tapping the Vein. The album is literally 
actually called The Damage. The first song is called The Ledge. You can probably see that this is not going in a sunny, bright and shiny type of direction. But this isn't something that you can tell from the music alone, mostly because the softer, cleaner guitar tones often sort of tread the line between being darker and lighter, in that without any vocals you can take the songs to be anything. They can be uplifting or they can be depressive. It is when Heather Thompson starts singing and laying down the vocals that the song's directions are determined. And when the vocals come in and when the lyrics come in is when the song's moods become more apparent to the listener. In that regard, there is an interesting component to this album which I believe also separates it from most of their peers, in that The Damage isn't just an album in the sense that it's a collection of songs. Even though the band has repeatedly said that the songs are various stories that come from different sources, there is, however, where the album flow is concerned, a narrative element at play. Even though The Damage isn't a concept album in the classical sense of the term, it does, however, have a sort of concept-like flow in that the album feels like it's telling a singular story rather than several separate ones. This is so intrinsic to the album's overall structure that I'm even going to break down the album into three acts for you. What you see here is the album's track list divided into three acts. Each act in and of itself tells one aspect of the story and each song seems to progress the story itself. Now, how does that work, you might ask, given the fact that there is no central story that the album follows? Well, the album may not be a narrative-driven concept, but it can definitely be said that The Damage is a thematic concept. The themes that you will find in The Damage are appropriate for the name, in that most of the songs revolve around themes of negative self-image, self-abuse and or mutilation, sexual assault, inability to make emotional connections, depression, suicidal ideation and the like. Like I said, this isn't bright and shiny territory. Here. Right off the bat, the album starts with the proclamation, more or less, I don't want to be just another lover on a ledge. There is a very subtle undertone, or rather subtext bordering on text, that there has been an emotionally devastating sexual encounter, which the album sort of takes and runs with for its duration. Sexuality being a rather central theme to some of the songs, well, at least three of them, it is not explored in the way that sexuality is usually explored in rock, in that the act itself is never touched upon, but the aftermath of the act plays a central role in some parts of the story. Now I have said that structurally the album has a narrative element in that the first two songs sort of introduce you to the general concepts that you will be dealing with, the themes that will be apparent. Song number three, Sugar Falls, is perhaps the most treacherous fucking song I have ever heard in an album. It sort of has these Sadie Hawkins prom dance type vibes with its glistening synthesizer embellishments, the softer ballad-like tone, and the fact that it is slightly more optimistic than the more vicious and angry songs that had come before it, that it manages to lull you into this false sense of security and makes sure that you are in no way ready for the pure emotional devastation that is about to be unleashed upon you. Because right after the softer touches of Sugar Falls, you are immediately hit in the face with the song Beautiful, which I wish it was just about the inability to perceive oneself as beautiful, but unfortunately it doesn't stop there. You see, the central theme of the song isn't just that one considers oneself to be ugly all the time. Do you know what it's like to feel Not now, Sonny Moore, you're gonna get yours. But it also seems to outline a sexual assault and with more than one assailant at that and immediately conflates the idea of not being beautiful with this act in the way that it sort of creates a perception that this act was perpetrated because the perpetrator seems to have considered the victim as beautiful 
And the disbelief at this particular possibility when mixed with the act that is being described is just fucking too much, okay? It's just too much in one song. The sort of dissonant, reverb-rich, and minor chord approach of the verse guitars do not really help. Thompson also delivers the hook vocals with sort of harrowing harrowing dedication and passion and it just it just fucking destroys your soul is what it does after beautiful the album's mood just starts sinking lower and lower and lower each subsequent song just grabbing you by the throat and pulling you further down all of this sort of coming to a head in fingertips which is a song that is blatantly about actively considering suicide is indicated by the lyrics fate is at my fingertips and the constant questioning do you think this is insane does this make me crazy the fact that i'm even considering this act two comes to a close with the song broken which is sort of a shout out to the beginning of the album namely the song the ledge because the overall mood of broken has the protagonist on a literal ledge right after fingertips this song might be considered a bit of a hope spot at the end of act two the arguable Act 2 mainly because it is just a touch less depressing than Fingertips, which isn't really saying much because the song Fingertips is basically the bottom of a lightless, completely pitch black pit, the actual absolute red line. And after that, the mood really doesn't recover for the rest of the album. When the album reaches its arguable third act, it starts to play on the aftermath aspect quite a lot, in that the themes suddenly shift from the ones that you have seen so far to what happens after trauma is experienced. First comes Hurricane, with the overall theme being inability to actually talk about what happened. And then everything is the depression that inevitably sets in. And then falling in is basically the utter incapability to make any sort of real connection. Mainly because any connection that is being sought out or that will probably be made if it is allowed always calls back to the traumatic event itself. Now, without having an actual single story to go on, or, you know, with the underlying narrative that I just described, the damage manages to be extremely, and I do mean extremely potent, where emotional expression is concerned. It is not just the band bringing to life the feelings that inspire the words and or the feelings that are deeply embedded in the experiences being related by Heather Thompson. It's not just that Thompson, by her admission, is reliving the same trauma by her own admission in interviews reliving them herself it is just that the whole seems to be designed to sort of take you in and make you live through the suffering if this was a movie i would say that it would be martyrs in that the director of that particular film has remarked that the entire point of the movie was to sort of take audience through the harrowing experience that the main character is going through, which I find to be a commonality with the damage. Now, whether or not this was intentional is, of course, up for debate. What isn't up for debate, however, at least in my opinion, is that the absolute emotional impact of the damage cannot and should should not be underestimated. And the thing is, the first two songs, especially the single Butterfly, sort of seems like your more typical, grungy, extremely plain and honest sort of teen angsty type songs, and they in no way prepare you for what awaits you for the rest of the album. And the fact that these are actual experiences that unfortunately has happened to people is quite apparent in the lyricism, which is entirely devoid of any kind of artistry, any kind of embellishment or verbiose sort of wording. It is usually just blunt, in-your-face, harrowing expression of actual trauma being experienced by the people who are describing the story to you.
Well, as it stands, I believe that the Damage is one of those albums that are often quite overlooked because it doesn't quite reach into the realm of metal and it doesn't really belong into the realm of rock. It is also very easy to dismiss these songs as just being yet another, you know, late 90s type post-grunge kind of band with t angsty kind of teenage type lyrics, which is kind of far from the truth, but it's also easy to see how that might be the perception of someone who is just casually observing this album. I mean, that was what I thought at first upon hearing Butterfly. I mean, yes, it was interesting to me, but it wasn't really anything special, not until I listened to the rest of the album, which is kind of the reason why I'm even making this review in the first place. After the damage is released in 2000 and Two, Tapping the Vein actually released the second album seven years later in 2009, titled Another Day Down, which to this day remains to be the band's only other full-length album, which will be the subject of my next review. But for now, I just want to say that if you are in any way a fan of dark music, if you like a bit of depression in what you listen to, if you enjoy genuine emotion in what you are hearing, I would strongly urge you to give Tapping the Veins the Damage a listen. It is well worth your time, and the sheer weight of it is much heavier than it would appear from the outside. Well, for now, having finished this review and having relived listening to the album one more time, I think I'm gonna go and listen to it again. Until next time, though, fuck COVID-19. This is Eason. Peace out. Stay safe. Stay sane. And if you like my content, please subscribe. I said now.